there's the lifetime deal that recently came out. It's called Catalyst Storytelling Studio. And what it can do is use AI to generate the scenes of your story. You can add a simple prompt and it's going to generate the story for you. Plus, you can customize a whole lot of things. So let's go ahead and review it right now. What's up, everyone? So I want to show you the lifetime deal that recently came out and we're going to review it. So first off, you can grab it for $49 and there's different licenses here, which I'm going to show you in a bit. Now, you can go ahead and grab it with the link in the description and you have a 60 day money back guarantee. So in case you don't like it, just go ahead and refund it. All right. So let's talk about the deal itself. So first off, if you grab license tier one, it's going to be tied to the pro individual plan. So whatever is going to be updated on that plan is what you're going to get. But if you get tier two and over, you're going to be tied to the studio plan, which is what I would recommend. Now, tier one, it's forty nine dollars and you get access to one user and two hundred and fifty images per month. Now, I think that's more than enough for most of us, unless you plan to use this constantly or, or unless you plan to use this, for example, if you're going to build a storytelling scenes for a movie, you're going to need a whole bunch of images. So in that case, I would recommend that you jump into license tier two. In that case, you're going to get unlimited images per month. Now, if you're going to collaborate and you need more users, jump into license tier three. But I think 200 bucks is a bit steep for what you could do right now. Because I think that basically you, you can get it done with license tier two, unless you need the collaboration features. Okay. So I'm in tier two, and that's what I'm going to show you. So let's go ahead and jump into Catalyst. So, first off, the UI is actually pretty simple. I think they can really revamp this with organization and folders and all of that. So, I think that's something that they need to implement. And also a search feature to find your projects. Because once you really start using this, it's going to get a little bit chaotic trying to find what you just created. All right. So let's go into create a new project. First of all, let's give it a name. So it's going to be for video, which what we're doing right now. And you have the option to select sketch or cinematic. Sketch is faster to generate the images, but cinematic, obviously, is going to be way better, better looking. So I would recommend this one. And then you have three aspect ratios. So you got landscape, which is what you're viewing right now as a YouTube video rectangle. You got the square and then you got the portrait as you would for a story mode, for example, for uh, TikTok, uh, Instagram stories, etc. So we're going to use 60 by nine. So it's going to create this and it's actually pretty simple. You can go ahead and start from an empty project, which I would recommend if you already have an idea of what you want to do. Whoops, let me go ahead and close this. If you have an idea of what you want to do, if not use help me draft the script and you have the option for a CSV word or text file. So let's go ahead and draft a script. Okay, so I can go ahead and pitch it an idea and it's going to generate the script for me, which is I think it's pretty useful when you don't have a clear idea of what you want to do. So you want to just, hey, pitch me something. I'll, I'll give you the idea and you go out there, right? And you have some options down here that you can use. So for example, if you find something interesting, go ahead and select something from here, but it's not pitch your idea. So let me go ahead and think about something. Okay, so here's the main storyline that I just quickly wrote here. This is a compelling story that delves into the challenges faced by a couple as they navigate the busting city of Dubai with a unique blend of opportunities and obstacles. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click and it's going to generate it for me. Let's give it a few seconds. It should be done in really quickly. Here we go. We just received the script from the script assistant. So these are the scenes that it's going to generate an image for us. So we can go ahead and edit each one of these if we like. So go ahead and go through them with calm. In this case, I'm not going to go through them, but I just want to give you the idea. Okay. So first of all, we're going to think that everything's OK. We don't need to edit anything here. But in the case, in this case, as this is a, a review, I do think that they should provide more AI features. In this case, for example, go ahead and regenerate this section instead of regenerating the whole thing. And also, I would also like to add more of these scenes right here. So I have the option to manually add them or have AI do it for me. So in this case, they don't have that. So let's go ahead and continue and it's going to generate the image for each one of these scenes. And we're going to be able to edit these scenes individually. I can go ahead and edit these prompts from here and let's wait for them to finish and we'll go through the next steps of this review. Here we go. It just generated the scenes for this story. And my big complaint for this is the amount of images created in the first run. I mean, for an actual story, you would need at least 100 images, 200, etc. for an actual story. In this case, it jumps too much to actually be a complete story. So we would have to create a lot of frames here and we need to add these prompts for this frame. So I'll add the script and then it's going to generate the image for it. So that's one of the options. Another thing that I dislike is the scenes organization. So I can go ahead and drag and drop these, but it won't move from the scenes over here. So I'll go ahead and turn it back 
I would like to drag and drop also from here, but I can't. I can just select it as I did right now. Okay. Now for the editing features, I can change the characters from here. So if I don't want Daniel, I'll go ahead and select it. And there's other type of characters that I can select. Okay. Then I have my characters when I add them there. So let's just say that I want to change it for this guy and I can go ahead and regenerate the scenes with that guy right there. Okay. Same thing goes with Nicole in this case is there's two characters and that have the export options. Now for the editing features, I have the option to redo this prompt and go ahead and redo it. Okay. But in this case, we're going, we're going to go into edit and show you all the editing features. So first of all, I can view the prompt right here, the framing angle. I can go ahead and change it. The shot angle, the creative direction. So it's right here. I can add a negative prompt. So if I want something to not be in the image, I go ahead and tell it right here. So for example, I don't want it to be a scene in the airport or with a plane inside of it, and it's going to remove it. Okay. There's also the scene information here and the scene prompt. And I go ahead and regenerate it from there. Now, what if I want to reposition the character? I can do so by clicking on it and it's going to do this little sticky sticks there that I can go ahead and move them around. So let's just say that this guy, I want to move them, I don't know, all the way up there and let's keep her there. Let's go ahead and generate. Here we go. It just regenerated and well, it's, it, it kind of went crazy, right? Because it added a third person and this one's kind of weird there. So they need to tweak this up a little bit more. And one of the things I've noticed that when you move the character to, uh, I don't know, if I move it here on top, it's going to make it smaller. So it does take care of that or it will change the scene to a different, it will add a different type of wear or something else like that. So it works fine. But in this case, it didn't work so well. And I don't know why, but it didn't. But I wanted you to see this, okay? Now there's also delete images and I can generate a fill tool. So for example, I can select this section right here. So I'll go ahead and add it there. Here we go. And I'm going to say add a spider, right? So I'm going to generate it and it's going to generate some images with the spider there. So uh, just a quick example of what you could do. There we go. It just added it. So let me go ahead and select it there. Uh, kind of funky looking. It's got a little bit of light there, which shouldn't be there. And that's kind of weird. But I mean, it is a weird prompt that I'm adding the spider there. But as you see, as you can see, it's right there. Okay. So let's go select the main screen and assign that one to the storyboard, which was already there. So in this case, it did a really bad job at editing, right? But those are the editing features that you have. In my previous test, it did a okay job. So not as bad as this one. So do consider that, right? Now, if I want to do more with this, I can go ahead and download it, clone it, and delete it in case I want to change that scene. Then I have the information here. For example, Dubai International Airport Arrival. I can go ahead and change it to Exploring Dubai uh, Soaks, Visit a Burj Khalifa or Desert in Gaddafi. Also like that one, Regenerate. And you have those little kind of tweaks that you can do, which I think is pretty cool, right? But I mean, my main issue with this is the amount of images generated in the first run. So I can go ahead and add more scenes if I like, but like I said, it's going to do, it's going to be a lot of manual work. So it's a quick overview of what you can do. So things that should be considered. Okay, here we go. It's regenerated and visit to Burj Khalifa and it's back there. So I, I'm guessing they're on a train or a tram, something like that, and they're going that way. So, so just like that, you can go ahead and edit each one of these scenes. And once you like what you have, go ahead and you have the present option to obviously you can copy the link and share it or go through the scenes as you would right here when you are doing a storytelling. So it's kind of going through that story go ahead there and view it this way or that way, exit the presentation mode or share it with that. So those are the options that you have as of now for Catalyst Storytelling. I mean, if you ask me if I recommend this, I'd say it's still on its early stage. So I do recommend that you test it out, see if it's going to work for your own needs and if you're going to keep it or not. Remember, you have the 60 day money back guarantee. So for the price, I think it's well priced because it's in a lifetime deal and you're not, you're not paying month to month. But if they add all those features that I was talking about that they need to implement, especially generating way more images from the beginning, I think it's a great buy when they add that feature. But until now, I think you should test that out and decide if you should keep it or not. And that's a wrap for this deal.